now daily du'as because daily du'as should be a part of our integral daily living. Absolutely, and with us to explain better with the mustahab du'as that we can do on a daily basis, and we're honoured to have Brother Sayyid Haider Jaisani. Thank you very much, Salma. I come to me. So lovely to have you here today. Thank you very much. So today, this morning, we're going to discuss um, a daily du'a before Fajr, um, and it's um, if you'd like to just explain a bit more about the du'a and you know how. Okay, so about. this uh, the first du'a that we're going to be speaking about is uh, after two rak'at nafil of Fajr. That is prayed before Fajr or, or, or within Fajr itself. Uh, narrated by Hafar ibn Muhammad when the noble Prophet وسلم, had prayed two rak'at before the morning prayer, he laid down on his right side and placed his right hand under his right cheek, then said this special dua, which is a tawakkul. Um, I have uh, basically I've put it, I've put in my firmest handle with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, for the rest of the day, my 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 niya, the rest of the day will be rolled mutawakkilun um, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that happens today, I have accepted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen my path today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, choose my path and I've left it into your hands because you are the most merciful um, and most gracious as well. Um, it's a beautiful dua and... Um and it says that <coughs> he recited in between the nafal and the, the, exactly, the wajib exactly, prayers. Yeah. Do you think um, there's a significance there of, of the timing of this du'a? Um, not, not specific. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a mustahab of actually reciting it. Um, the, the, the best time to recite it is obviously between your nafil and, and fajr itself. <coughs> but reciting it after or between or before, um, it has, I think it has the same, same, same kind effect. Of effect yeah. What do you think about um, du'as being like a, a spiritual trajectory for your day, kind of giving you a direction, sort of depending on the du'a? I mean, I mean, I think spiritually one of all, it's going to pump up your spirit very mm -hmm. highly, mm -hmm. especially from early in the morning when you're in dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're reciting to, listening to Qur'an from the morning on your way to work <clears throat> or anything, it, it, it uplifts your spirit. So knowing this kind of du'a, knowing the, the meaning of it and reciting it in the morning, I personally think it brings a different kind of spirit to, to, towards you throughout the whole day. You know, you, you, you'll be confident, you'll be happy, you, you have to work on your stresses you've put on side and, 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 you, and you've put your mind to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever happens today, you've accepted that's been written for you. So I think these kind of du'as actually uplift your spirit from the morning. You're, you're more happier. Mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 if you can see all these mutadayin in men and ulama, mm -hmm. because they do these on a daily basis, you've never seen them frowning or angry at someone. Because they're in dhikr Allah from the morning until they sleep. So it, it brings a ha happy spirit inside you and you're smiling and everyone will love you. And what about the factor, the, the time <coughs> factor? Some people think, you know, it's a busy life, this 24 hour, this 24 7 type of lifestyle. Do we have time for these? What, what kind of practical tips or encouragements would you give? People okay, in this well, if you're, if you're reading it, if you're reading it without, without a, um, if you're just reading it for the mustahab itself, mm -hmm. um, it'll take you less than a minute. I mean, this less than a minute. So that's not too much time to ask. Less than a minute, you know. You're, you're, mm -hmm. And this less than a, less than a, something you've said, yeah. which t which has taken you less than a minute, has given you blessings throughout your whole day. You know, mm -hmm. like maybe something you have. So this spe specific dua is for if you have a haja, if you have an exam, if you have a deal, if you have something that's just hanging on and you're waiting for it to go through. This dua is very good for it, mm -hmm. and saying it just once in the morning. Just like that, with a fatah to malbanin after you 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 finished. I mean, where where would you find the morning du'as? Where would people be able to access these? Um, so Mufati Hajjanan has uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of um, of these du'as, and also um, uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of books which are uh, written by Imam Sajjad, so Munajat Imam mm. Sajjad and stuff like that. You find these du'as across the internet and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're available. Yeah. They're available. you just got to be bothered to look for it and actually yeah. find it. I think what... what, what sorry. I was say, what do you both think about reading the du'as in English or reading the du'as in different languages, the spirituality aspect of it? Because say, Allah 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 is not, not capped, perfect. Yeah. Allah you know. is not capped to any languages. He's the creator of all languages. So he's, even if you do it in English... Well, the interesting thing in this du'a is that he's, um, it says in the translation, I seek refuge, refuge with Allah from the outbursts of the Arab and the non-Arab. Mm -hmm. And it's encompassing sort of all mankind. And basically. And basically. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't know about yourselves, but um, if Arabic isn't your first language, um, I think it's nice to read the Arabic in however you 
can in the, in the efficiency mm. and then the English the English translation or the language of your um, you know your, your, that your you're preference used to, your yeah, choice yeah, yeah. it gives you the understanding doesn't it and then it reiterates really what you've spoken of course. Um, and then maybe the blessings in both it's about your near absolutely it's what your heart or your heart is feeling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that from there yeah. it's not from what you say no so even if you said the words wrong even if you're saying it in English the words are wrong but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that your near yeah. is you're supplicating to him yeah, yeah. So he'll take yeah, that from from yeah. according. So would you would you both think about that line because it says about the outburst of the Arab and the non-Arab? Because that struck me as I was reading the translation because of the kind of world that we're living in now that people lack patience and there's like outbursts. So he said he said seeking that protection from from people's kind of spontaneous anger or you know people are very impatient nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, look, the, uh, the world we live in is changing every single day, mm -hmm. and the evil's taking over every single day, even stronger than before. Um, I mean, when, uh, when Rasulullah came out with his message, he came out in Arabic. Yeah. There, a lot of there's a, there was a lot of people at that day and age, they didn't speak or write Arabic, even though they lived in the Arabic realm. Mm. A lot of them didn't know, wasn't able to, to I mean, the, the, the writing, the scripture was completely different to yeah, how it yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. now. Um, so people just had to adapt to that. But what is with now, now, right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a mind for you to think widely. And also, um, we live in a day and age where, where there's a lot of war happening, a lot more yeah, than how sure. it used to be. Sure. There's a lot of hatred going around, there's a lot of anger. So it's up to us who understand these things, these rulings, because our religion teaches us a lot about um, calming each other down. We are, we are silmon to, all yeah, to yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. So it's up to us, it's our duty to, 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 to show this to the world, whether they take it or not. Yeah. al akhir. But as, as long as you've given a small effect to someone else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees it as a massive deed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, these ad'ayah actually help you. Yeah. Because there's dua for if you have an ill person. Mm -hmm. There's dua to, to ease your day. There's ad'ayah for, for blessings of, of rizq. And we're actually very blessed. I was going to say about the, the sickness that we have. Um, you know, I, I have friends from other schools of thought and they were saying about, you know, a migraine, for instance, cure. And I said, well, we have du'as for exactly. that. And we're very exactly. blessed in yeah, the school exactly. of Ahl to have all this, you know, um, fountain of knowledge that we just need to tap into. Um, so it's, it's actually very exactly. true yeah, that so we have these. Um, what about the obstacles to du'as being accepted? The, there's not the, the obstacles. I think I personally, there's only one obstacle, and that's your knee, and that's 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 how you uh, you know. Um, there's no point of doing it just because of sake of you have to do it, mm -hmm. because your knee plays a massive role in this. Okay. okay. Uh, if you do if you do a, a du'a and your knee is somewhere else, yes. You're, 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 so people say, oh, I've done du'a, it hasn't been accepted. Where's your knee? See, for you to say this, I've done it and it hasn't been accepted. Don't do it just for the sake of. Testing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it to be attended, mm -hmm. you know, to be accepted. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. have full faith. I think it's good for it everything, us. doesn't it? It's yeah. every niyat we do that we, if we do perform hajj, for instance, we go for ziyara, we're yeah. just going, if we're going to say, I've done it, it's a tick box, I've done this thought, ah, I should get what I want. Um, it doesn't work, it doesn't like, work that like that because it's, it's actually the, the connection you're building through this. So like you said, less than a minute perhaps to recite that, but it's the connection and the effort we make. So with feeling, with yes, spirit, yeah. Yeah. with your heart, with so your it's heart. Like, it's like my, my mom. I, our mom, I've done all the chores, so. But wh wh whereas you do them without your mom asking you to do it, yeah. she'll come and give you a pat on the back or she'll, 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 she'll give you extra mm -hmm. uh, rice or something mm -hmm. like that. She'll give you a blessing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in a very, very, in a very similar, similar way, you know. It's about whatever you in your heart. You know, you do it and you leave it. Doors will open without you even noticing. Sometimes you'll say, my, my hajj is not uh, muqli. But you see, you look in front of you like, wait a minute, but I've passed that obstacle. Mm. You remember later on. Mm -hmm. I've passed it. So you're saying this one is a, is a good one for the deals, the things that are pending. To, to, you're praying for a good outcome that they, Allah will give you an opening, if I can put it that way. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, look, Allah, Alhamdulillah, He listens to everyone that calls out for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's just, it's just putting your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. The reason why we use the imma is a wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's like it's like um, it's like you working at a place, you you wanna you wanna you wanna make your manager happy. 
So the director is happy with you and he'll increase your pay or he'll increase your status in the job. This is exactly, well, it's not exactly the same, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left us people that he loves, that we can do wasila through them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get, to get out. But it all depends on your niya at the end of the day and how you take it and how much, how much ikhlas you put into this dua as well. So we're going to, we're going to recite for us Inshallah. in Arabic. I'm looking forward Inshallah. to... <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم استمسكت بعروة الله الوثقى التي لن فصام لها واستعصمت بحبل الله المتين أعوذ بالله من فورة العرب والعجم وأعوذ بالله من شر الشياطين الإنس والجن توكلت على الله طلبت حاجتي من الله حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم that was that was amazing. That was amazing. that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I wish we could all recite like you. Unfortunately, yeah, I was going to ask how how long does it take for you to learn it in that fashion? Because I mean, many of us would just be happy to be able to pronounce the Arabic correctly and get our heart in the right place. I mean, this is I mean, a nice sound. This is a good alhamdulillah, sound. I've got kind of a shortcut being uh, raised in an Arabic family. Right. But um, you know, I I I'll be very honest with you. A few years ago, I didn't know how to speak. Uh, um, write Arabic or even read it mm, mm. a few years ago wow. but you know I pushed myself to learn it you know I was writing with families I told them don't write in English no more write in Arabic Mashallah. my friends write in Arabic yeah, like, yeah, yeah, te yeah. text each other yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah. and it helps a lot it helps a lot but alhamdulillah we can, you know you need to understand them even even if you're non like I've got I've got a friend who doesn't speak Arabic but when he recites he recites it better than me uh, because he's understood the words He's understood mm -hmm. the dua. What's a good start in place then to, to be able to improve your recitation? Because you, you came with this nice melody, not Quran, but it's got, you know, like a nice yeah. sound. Yeah, it's, it, like, it's, it's, it's like a munajat. It's, it's called like a munajat kind yeah, of melody. Yeah. Um, well, listen to a lot of adhiyah. Um, there's, there's, there's teachers who uh, recite these adhiyah very beautifully. But it's just, it's just you know, uh, so listening you, to them. Did you listen or did you actually get taught? No, we'll, we'll just listen. Just listen. Just literally yeah. listen. Starting point is, a, is yeah, just, just listening. Listening, mm -hmm. listening, 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 listening. Yeah, listening to a lot of tajweed and listen to a lot of uh, latmiyat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You'll be able to get your sad mm. from your happy, from the happy itself. This is a bit of like a, you're begging. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa taala. So you have to come with a, like a melody where it's like, mm. you know, I'm weak in front of you, Allah subhanahu wa taala. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just listening, listening, understanding what you're saying is very important as well. So the emotions come out with, mm. the, the, if you understand it, if you don't understand it, you have no emotions because you don't understand what you're saying. Mm. But if you understand it, then your emotions come out automatically as you're reciting. Absolutely. And that's to do with the connection with the heart then. That's like the, the feeling. Because we can do things robotic, bo robotically, right? Where we just, you know, the words come out, but our feeling is not present. We're not present. Inshallah, I have the near. So, you know, um, you, you can never say about yourself like, oh, it's 100%. Not us. Inshallah, you have it. Mm -hmm. And accept is it's accepted by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's just it's just what you put into what you do every single day. It's uh, what you uh, if you put the time to actually do Allah Subhanahu wa Taala actually recognizes that you've put a minute towards me early in the morning. Even though I've asked you to pray for me and it takes five minutes, you've put another minute of your time. Mm. No problem. Khalas. It's like you're doing, you know, you've done, you've done overtime for me. I'm gonna bless you for that, and he won't, he won't forget you. If he doesn't bless you today, a blessing is coming for you. And you, you so you know people people actually. Um, don't acknowledge their yeah. blessings because they don't see it happen straight away. Like I yesterday asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. It hasn't happened. But they don't know they've already been blessed without them even knowing. You're living today. That's a blessing. But even, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. tawfiq that we get to recite this, that every morning we're able to wake up for Fajr, we're able to do our prayers, it's a blessing, isn't it, that God has given us that ability to stand up in front of Him and then yeah. to additionally to have these du'as. Um, and I think even in that, you're, you're the gratitude that should be flowing from our hearts that, you know, we could be one of those that, you know, we, we stay asleep through these times. So um, it's a blessing that we should, you know, from the start of the day. But it's been, um, 
That's before, oh, let me just ask you this. You felt, for yourself, in your own experience, you're a reciter. You feel, alhamdulillah, that Allah is, is gracing you, inshallah. Uh, you know, we're, we're thankful every day for everything we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people uh, sleep, sleep at night, they don't wake up in the morning. There's people who sleep at night, wake up ill, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. different kind of illnesses, mm -hmm. which God forbid anyone to have. Um, you know, you just, you just have to be thankful. You know, no one is perfect. Even though a person can recite this very beautifully, it doesn't mean that, you know, his dua is 100% accepted. You know, someone else can come along and he's, he's reading it, but with ikhlas, with ikhlas, and he knows exactly what he's saying, and he's truly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connection, the connection, the connection. His connection is more than that person who's actually recited it beautifully. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just, a'malukum bin niyat. Your, your, your everything you do on a daily basis, it depends on your niyyah. Niyyah, niyyah is everything. I think that's mm -hmm. the, the beautiful message of today that you know, I think a lot of our, all our viewers can take today. Um, thank you so much for joining it's us. It's a pleasure it's, and a pleasure. We've run out of time today. Um, and it's a beautiful intro to be able to talk about this du'a. Um, so we're going to now go to Sister Masuma Jaffa, who's going to talk about um, etiquettes and hijab and the right to choose and be hosted by Sister Amy. Thank you.